I have had literally threes of people write in and ask me what we do to cut spot welds around here other than a drill bit because some people think that that's just not the thing to do. But after the break, I'm gonna to talk to you about why I do like cutting with a drill bit and why there are other things that you can do, but they're not necessarily my favorites because of a couple of little things. We'll go over the caveats in all of these and what problems you can encounter right after the break. Restoration of a classic Ford is a journey of discovery. Let AutoCrafters help you with yours. We offer quality parts for Falcon, Fairlane, F-Series, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. Contact us today. All right, so I'm gonna be talking about what I do for spot weld cutting and why I use what I use. My primary go-to is a drill bit. Quite simply, for most applications, when you're doing this stuff, a drill bit's the best place to go because, A, you can get them anywhere. I mean, there are spot weld cutters available at like Harbor Freight if you're here inside the United States. If you're not, you may have a problem getting one of those, but I guarantee you, you can get a drill bit. The only problem with a drill bit is if you're going through a double layer of metal. If you have a piece that you're getting rid of on top of a piece that you're keeping, guess what? That drill bit doesn't care. It's gonna go all the way through all of it and you're gonna have a big hole in the piece you're trying to keep and that just makes for a lot more hassle trying to weld it up. So if you're trying to keep something, a drill bit's not necessarily your best bet. Another hot tip with drill bits is check the size that most of your spot welds are. As Ford moved through doing these old cars, uh, spot welds actually changed and they got a little bit bigger. So check the diameter of your spot weld an ish, and then go down and find a drill bit, a titanium or something really sturdy like that, or cobalt drill bit, and you should be good to go. Buy about four of them, because you're gonna go through them pretty quickly if you've got, say, 100 spot welds to cut on a classic Ford or any other kind of car. Now keep in mind that this isn't just for the Ford guys. This is actually for pretty much anybody. If you've got a classic car and you're working on it, you can use a spot weld cutter if you've got spot welds that need to be cut. So let's keep going with that. And I'm gonna to talk to you now about the next type of spot weld cutter that's more commonly available than the last type I'm gonna talk about. Now the second type is almost as available as a standard drill bit. This is a cutter that I got from the guys at Harbor Freight. I just went down to the store and picked up three of them. They are double-sided, so if you wreck this one, and you will, <laughs> it's not an if, it is a when, because these teeth are very aggressive and they can cut through stuff, but the problem you run into with them is, is that they are somewhat brittle sometimes and they will fracture and, and break. And I don't, it's not even necessarily because this is from Harbor Freight, it's just because of the type. If these teeth hit another piece of metal, like say an overlap piece of metal underneath, and it catches on that, it can actually detooth it. It'll break a tooth off, you have to roll it over and get another one, so I recommend buying them in the pack of threes, only because the number three just seems like a really good number to go with. You can buy eight or 10 of them if you're gonna be doing a whole car. If you're doing a cowl on a classic car and there's like a 200 plus spot welds, get eight of them because you don't want to have to go back to the store to get more. These are really good, but you do have to do a thing with them. You have to go in and actually put a uh, dimple in the metal with a drill bit so that this point can sit in that dimple. If you do not do that, it's gonna to tend to walk all over the place and be a lot less effective. So it does also do another thing. It kind of doubles the amount of work that you have to do because you're having to put a uh, drill bit in there and dimple the metal and then go in and actually use this to do your final set to get the hole cut. The nice thing about these is that they can keep you from going through two layers of metal. Like I talked about with the regular drill bit, these will stop if you stop it before you go through that second layer of metal that you're trying to keep. So keep that in mind. If you have something like that, you may be going in and doing what I'm doing on the Ranchero, which is kind of mixing my metaphors. I have to now go in on this car and actually you know, cut out because I have metal that I don't want to lose on the car when I'm taking the radiator core support out of it. All right, the final one I'm gonna talk about is a spot weld drill bit, and it is basically just that. It is a drill bit that has had the um, actual facings dropped from a point down to a flat with a center point on it. I like this one probably just behind the regular drill bit. The biggest problem with it is just availability. You can't find them everywhere. I'm typically having to order these from offline. I'll get them from Amazon, places like that. 
This one is far more sturdy than the other type I just showed you. It will hold up a lot better, but it does dull because you're cutting, you know, big swaths of metal with a flat blade. And it's also pretty short. They're usually typically only about this long, only about two to three inches long tops. And a lot of times I find that they're kind of hard to get in certain areas to make your cuts. But it does the same thing that the other bit does, is it saves you from having to wreck the uh, underlying metal if you're needing to go through two layers and you're wanting to keep the bottom layer. And the reason you would want to do that is in areas like if you're trying to do a concourse restoration on something and you want to make your metals look similar and the bottom metal is exposed and the metal you're cutting through because it's easier to get to is on top and you want to cut through the, the sacrificial metal and keep this metal facing showing, this will allow you to do that. Like on our Ranchero, I don't have that problem because we're replacing the radiator core support, we're replacing the battery tray apron. On the driver's side, even though we're replacing things, I am going to weld to the inside because you can see the outside top of the radiator core support very easily. So I don't really have an issue there, but you may run into a thing where you have an issue. I would say in, in um, levels of things that I like, I guess maybe a top three, since there's only three of them, would be the drill bit first because I find the most use for that. And using that, it's a lot easier to do what I do. And then follow that with the drill, uh, drill bit spot, spot weld cutter, the one that's got the flat face on it. And then three, three would be uh, the one that is that I got from Harbor Freight that is basically just the, the serrated cutter. That one works okay. I've just had more success with the other two when I'm working. Some guys will probably tell me that they have better success with the spot weld cutter that I got from Harbor Freight. It's entirely up to you. And I'm sure you guys will you know, say something to me about, hey, I have great success doing this. That's fine. Leave it in the comments below. I would like to hear from you about that. Tell me if you've got something else you're using that I'm not aware of that's a great spot weld cutter because there are things that I don't know. I mean, I'm finding out things every day where I go, my gosh, I just didn't know that. Well, do me a favor, go out and check out our Patreon account at the $10 a month level. You get monthly meetings with me on Zoom. Uh, we have a lot of people show up to that and it's a lot of fun. We do you know, tech Q&A. Uh, we talk about what's coming up next on the episodes and I have actually gotten really good episode ideas from my guys that show up on the Patreon account. Yes, I take ideas from the guys that watch the shows as well. Uh, this one actually came from a couple of viewers that are not Patreon supporters but uh, I find that my Patreon guys are really fun to hang out with and a lot of fun to talk to. We have a ball. Uh, also on there, you get monthly tech videos from me, Andrew, my camera guy that's working with me today is producing those. So that gives him something to do, which is why I'm doing those videos. Other than well, and the fact that my Patreon guys are really important. Another thing I'd like for you to do is subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe to the channel, click that bell for notification, please do so because YouTube is absolutely jacking with the algorithm stuff right now. We're finding all kinds of issues with things, just us just not appearing for folks whenever they're watching the channel. So if you subscribe, you'll get an email notification. You'll be able to watch us every week and you'll know exactly what's going on. Finally and all, do me a favor, be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other as nice, and you have a great week and we'll see you on down the road. So, the pretty girl, and Logan are studying the teen suite. And the ranchero sits here in the sun, biding its time. It's sad. There's a whole car here with many, many things to do. And yet, none of them are being done, except if I do them. So, I don't know if I can blame him for this because the spot weld cutting is kind of something I told him I'd help him with. I don't want to blame him anyway because he's, you know, 17 and it's my job to blame him. I'm the adult. I don't adult very well. Though.